live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay. We're at the IBM InterConnect 2017. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of three days of wall-to-wall. -wall. Day three, uh, winding down here at the event. Great show about cloud, data, and blockchain. Our next guest is Marie Week, who's the general manager of the blockchain group within IBM, and Greg uh, Wolfond, who's the chairman and CEO of Secure Key Technologies, announced a partnership with IBM, a lot of great success of blockchain. It's now a business unit in IBM. Marie, great yeah. to see you. Congratulations on the new role. Absolutely, we're really excited. We've seen so much momentum in blockchain that we really are investing heavily, created a new division, part of our industry platforms team, and we're off to the races. So Exciting. six weeks in the role now. Six weeks, I guess, I guess the business model is keep running hard, because <laughs> you guys have made great success. We had Ramesh, one of your um, uh, uh, workers in your division on earlier. He came from the labs, or the right. research team, research. and now is in solutions. The traction has been pretty amazing. Yes. So take us through um, from a business standpoint. Obviously, you're now got the P&L output running. You're going engaging customers and use cases. Where did this progress come from? Was it just, just, just the, the internal coalescence of IBMers and customers coming together? Give us why this is at its point today. I mean, I think the most important point about blockchain is that it really is a network effect. The whole idea of a shared distributed ledger where everybody has visibility to the appropriate parts of data that they want gives you some really interesting new business models. But you can't have a network effect, you can't have a community and an ecosystem if you don't have a common set of standards and a way to drive interoperability. So just 15 months ago, we launched with 30 other people the Hyperledger project in the Linux Foundation. It's been the fastest growing uh, open source project since the Linux Foundation started. So really impressive momentum. And you know, if you think back just a year, at Interconnect last year in February, we had this little demo of trading marbles. You know, this year, fast forward a year, we have a new division. We have 400 clients that we're working with on real uh, production level use cases. We have eight networks in production. Yep. We've got now version one of the standard, which really brings a lot of the enterprise requirements. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing all kinds of new use cases. Supply chain, yep. healthcare, government, financial services, all where we're really talking about being real now and trusted for business. And I would add that Ginny Rometty on stage hammering home the focus. Exactly. Like big time, so at a Watson-esque level. You can Absolutely. So, so that must be mobilizing the IBMers, obviously a new division. Right. What's the buzz internally, right? <laughs> you got people want to come work for you in your division now? It's like, I, I mean, what's happening? I, I do get an awful lot of emails from a lot of people who are very interested, but I always know when there's real momentum, when there are people who are doing it that we didn't tell to do it. You know, so we're starting with a pretty small team internally. Yep. My group itself, direct line, is about 200 people. There's about 600 people in the extended team across the different functions across IBM. But when I do a search on our internal you know, directory and search for blockchain, yes. there's over a thousand people who have that name already in their title or in their description yes. because they're working on it and they see the in innovative the power people. Of it. Innovative people get intoxicated by blockchain because they can just see the disruption elements. Greg, I want to ask you because you're actually doing it. Um, not only is it intoxicating to kind of grok what blockchain can be, there's some real use cases right now, you know, just yeah. really jamming hard on blockchain with the ledger. Can you just share quickly um, how that's playing out and in context to IBM and in the marketplace? Yeah, so we're, uh, SecureKey is a digital ID company. So we started in Canada years ago doing this login service for government. You show up, you want to see your taxes, your unemployment, your pension, any of 80 different departments. We made it easy for citizens to go there. You can redirect into a federated login with your TD login or your Royal Bank login. We have millions of Canadians who use that and we add hundreds of thousands a month, but it's really a login service. And it saved the federal government, I think, $800 million to get that done. But we wanted to move to the next step, which is sharing identity. So digital identity, and how do I share my attributes from TD Bank or Royal Bank or my data from Equifax or TransUnion in a trusted way with parties I want to and not share it in other ways. And we couldn't do that without Hyperledger. You know, so we can talk a little bit about why we went to it, but we have a network in Canada, we tested already phase one, we're launching later this year with Royal Bank, TD Bank, Bank of Montreal, Scotia, where a citizen can show up at a telco 
to create a new account, is it okay to share my name and address and my credit score? Yes, done. Accounts open in seconds. FinTrack changed the rules in Canada so you can open a bank account. Can I show up at a bank and share my attributes from the province and from a credit agency and create my bank account in seconds? And we've all had this problem, right? We don't talk to my I mean, wife. We live it every yeah. day. I mean, identity <laughs> theft is like, I think, front and center in mainstream life. Everyone's have either someone close to them or themselves get the phone call, the credit score's dropping, or hey, yeah. someone's had my identity for a couple weeks, this is brutal, even the it, credit cards are getting. It's funny, when I started this business, two of my friends had their identity taken over and someone put mortgages on their homes. And I said there had to be a better way to do it. Right, but if you, with blockchain, if we can take data from different sources, that the bank knows it's me and I can log in right now, that I possess this phone, that the province knows it's me and I can turn on the camera and check it's me, we can raise the ID validation score for everyone in the whole industry, from healthcare to government to banking, and we not only raise the ID validation, we also raise the auth score, because I'm not just logging in with my bank. I must have this phone with this SIM in it, and if it's canceled, it's not me. And normally people would put that through brokers in the middle, but NIST in the US said, we don't want brokers in the middle. They could peek, they could see yep. your data. I have single points of failure. If this is identity for health, et cetera, it goes down. Um, I have honey pots of data. People are collecting all of my stuff in one place. It's encrypted, but the bad guy's going to get that, right? They could go after the yeah. person and say, I need the keys, I have a member of your family. I mean, we're living in a world yeah, in yeah. cloud, we know, yeah. Marie knows, but you know, there's no perimeter anymore. Right. And the, the security experts that are state of the art right now are saying, even saying the Cuban day one here, it's uh, data is the new perimeter. So it's there it is, right? This is right. fundamental, what you're saying. This is the new perimeter, the data. It's and you distribute it. So no broker, right, means less of a threat matrix to, for people to hack, right? Yeah. No, you don't need a trusted third party to arbitrate. There shouldn't be, you shouldn't right? have to get other credentials and things to go, right? If I can log in at my bank right now and prove I've got the mobile device, can I release data from different sources? Can I, you know, 10% of Americans move every year. If I show up in an apartment, can I share that I'm Greg and my bank says I'm me, that I have this device from my mobile company, can I share a background check to, to say that it's me? We're going to do that in about eight seconds, as a, compared to the landlord having to go and pay a real estate agent one month's rent to vet you. And then when you do that, imagine the power now, right? Would you like to sign up for internet? Share your data, yes, click. Would you like content insurance? Click. Totally taking friction out for consumers, but making sure that the parties who provide that data, whether it's my bank, whether it's my government, they can't track me. I don't want my government or my bank knowing if I go to mental health or if I go to a cancer clinic. Really important they don't know. Yeah, healthcare. Where I, am. You, I yeah. mean, I don't know, it's like in Canada, but certainly in the United States, you can't get information about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> right. sure. and, and it's a perfect connection to blockchain, because the whole notion of blockchain in our mind is about a trusted network. And how do you get trust if you don't know who the people are who are participating? So we signed an agreement with the Food and Drug Administration in the United States to focus on leveraging blockchain for exchange of information around patients privately and securely for clinical drug trials. You know, it's just one example of now you bring that trust element that's built on a blockchain already as a new interoperable component of these new supply chain networks, whether it's around, around supply chain and global sourcing, whether it's the provenance of food or diamonds, um, there's some really interesting aspects that you can now add on top. And we're now even connecting, you mentioned cognitive, you know, now apply Watson on top of that. How do you increase the trust level in, in our new version one um, delivery of, of Hyperledger on the IBM cloud? we actually provide a trust score for the network. Scale of one to 100. You know, what if Watson could actually look at your use case and here are the recommendations and suggestions for how to improve the trust level. Improving it means getting more members, so it's more yeah. distributed and there's more sharing of information, but they're not going to want to share that information if yeah. there isn't a trust model. So give us a glimpse as to sort of your business. So you got 200 people, but you've got thousands of people within IBM that you can tap in addition to the huge portfolio of things like Cognitive, so you get this the startup right. <laughs> inside of startup IBM. Startup in IBM. Yeah. So wh what do you do, are you building out, and you said it's inside the industry platforms team, so what is that and what are you actually building out? So we're, we are building, we're taking and contributing, we're investing really in the Hyperledger project ourselves. We are one of now 122 um, members of the open source and open community project, and we're actually developing and contributing 
content. Big committer there. there. It's Big committer. IBM and we playbook. provide yeah. a support model for anybody who wants to use just Hyperledger. Mm -hmm. But we take Hyperledger back, and now we're delivering it as a secure platform on our high security network that is production grade, you know, enterprise strong would be Ginny's word for that, right? <laughs> and delivering that on our cloud, or letting you take a container and put it on your own enterprise if you really want your own private cloud. But we're also building industry solutions on top of that. So we announced a partnership with Maersk for global shipping on global trade digitization to provide greater visibility. Um, but on that deal, just to interrupt, that Ramesh was pointing, that wasn't a solution specifically for them, that was an industry scope correct. solution. So it's really a partnership. So in this case, again, it's that network effect, it's yeah. that ecosystem, it's not Maersk the customer, it's Maersk and IBM the partners who are now bringing forward as the anchor tenants in this new network the rest of our ecosystems, and we were interested because we have a big supply chain business for all our hardware as well. And, and you're selling a SaaS? product, is that right? Correct. So it's a subscription-based model? Correct. And then services on top of that? Or? And services both to develop new blockchain ap applications. We've had a number of our clients here from the 20,000 at Interconnect that have come up with new ideas. We're going to help them build that in a services kind of model. But many of these are going to be essentially SaaS networks where either they're going to pay a membership fee or they're going to pay per transaction, a percentage of the price, or they're going to participate in the savings because this is actually going to streamline the opportunity. In the case of SecureKey, yeah. the model, we see customers willing to buy um, the validation of an identity for an individual if they're participating in a critical transaction. A bank would certainly be willing to pay to increase the confidence that Greg is Greg if he was applying for a mortgage online. And, and the consumption is through the IBM cloud, correct? And that's Yeah, so there's a toolkit. We're big believers in open source. It's open at the ends, really easy using things like Bluemix to connect to the endpoints. And for us, it's just a magnificent coming together because things like uh, the high security network to turn banks on quickly where they trust it and they can put their data in a secure and trusted way make this all go faster. But that's the only place in the world I can get this, correct? Um, it is certainly the right. only place that you can get that level of security so, in a blockchain But from network. a competitive standpoint, somebody else has to build this out mm -hmm. and, and create as a, as a competitive product as IBM has and run it on somebody else's cloud for them to compete. Correct? That is correct. The strategy is not to spam the world's clouds, it's to say, hey, we've got this solution, here's how you get it, here's how and, you consume it. And we really firmly believe that if this isn't an interoperable set of standards, there will be other networks, there will be other participants. We want them all to be interoperable. We want a global identity standard for interlocking networks because that is actually the tide that yeah. raises all boats. Mm -hmm. So if they want to take Hyperledger and put it on their own private cloud or somebody else's cloud, sure. We support well, that so. thoroughly. <laughs> we think that the most enterprise grade cloud though is what I've You just got thousands of people doing it and you say, yeah. go for it. You know? exactly. <laughs> Bring it on, baby. <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, you had me at blockchain <laughs> in the interview. So <laughs> like, I, lo I love blockchain and I think it's very intoxicating from a disruption standpoint. Any entrepreneur, any innovator, just as this is a this is a bulldozer right. on existing business models and business, how people do things. So I'm sure the organic growth that you guys see is proving it, internal IBM and external. How do people get involved? What are you, what's your plans on building the ecosystem out? Because you know, right. you got a tiger by the tail here as the GM of this division now. You got to run hard, you got to embrace people, and you got to have events, what is your, what's your plan? And how do I get involved if I'm someone watching and we want to get involved? So, great simple ways to get involved you know, the developers, we want them to be involved directly through the cloud and through developer works. You get free access, you can get started quickly. In three clicks, you can have a four-peer Hyperledger network up and running on Bluemix, and you can start your own services and create. If you are a customer, what we're really suggesting is come and bring us our, your use case. Bring the participants in your network as well. Come into one of our IBM garages and we'll work that out for you. And I think it's important that we think blockchain has a huge potential or I wouldn't be in this new role, but we also think it's not for everything. Yep. You know, it's not the panacea for every business problem. We want to make sure that people are using it in the right way for areas where it really makes the most impact and then we'll help you implement that and develop yeah. it. 
And then we really see the whole ecosystem around our partners. You know, you're going to onboard people into a blockchain network. You're going to have to integrate with your backends. You're going to extend your mobile devices to provide these new services through apps. So our GSI community is really helping with the integration and the onboarding. Our ISVs are developing new services that run on those blockchain networks. And we just launched our new IBM Cloud for Financial Services, has a blockchain zone for all those FinTech startups to get access and reuse components so that we can accelerate the effect. All right, well congratulations, we're great for I see you in the new role, congratulations. Thank We're you. We're super excited for you and looking forward to getting the update uh, soon at uh, our new studio. We'll try to rope you into our new uh, Palo Alto studio. Greg, great to hear your success. This is the Nirvana, I mean, Secure ID is like the big, <laughs> I mean, easily, not like with some either token or, you know, it, engineered identity system. I and mean, this is a home it run. Is. It's, it, it's privacy and it's, as we talked about before the broadcast, Facebook. Would you trust Facebook to go see your medical records? Would you unlock your title using Facebook? You want things that are private, where people aren't tracking you and are more secure yeah. than that. So this Don is really- Don Tapscott called yeah. Facebook data fracker. <laughs> they like, they, we provide all our data for Facebook. They've got billionaires on it. Thanks so much for spending the Thank time. You. Blockchain revolution here inside theCUBE, bringing you really trusted content here on theCUBE, distributed around the world. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. More great footage, coverage coming up here. Stay with us.